Hello everyone and welcome back to the second episode of Hirschek, our brand new Black Forest winter series. And today we are building a badger area. And this badger area is basically the Badger Inn, which is a restaurant that features also the habitat for the badgers. And there is a couple of things I want to talk about um, during this, um, well, time lapse, but also in the real time part at the end of the video. You can, if you are someone who loves the real time part, it's like 15 minutes in. But until then, we are going to talk a lot about this build today and also kind of a little bit of uh, what's coming up the next uh, days, because I need to change my schedule a tiny bit uh, due to the fact that um, our Christmas has a little bit been busted because um, we have some COVID cases in the family and that means that our uh, yeah, entire Christmas planning is going to be a bit more different which also means that I have a different schedule for making videos um, but you know that's something I'm going to talk about later on but no worries everyone is fine it's just like um, a measurement of security so to say um, just to be fine. However, um, this build over here is one of my favorite ones and I gotta say that uh, this build really turned out super beautiful in the end where it is sitting actually. And I have to say as well that um, I used this for the decal uh, tutorial and I redid some of the decals for the actual build, uh, but I also did a couple of things that I have already done in the tutorial. If you have no idea what kind of tutorial I'm talking about, I'm gonna link this to you um, again as always in the info card so you can click on the info cards and just jump right away into the tutorial of the decals and I think the decals in general especially for this Black Forest pro uh, project um, are a major game changer and you can see that in every tiny gap and every tiny area and if I will have the time it's very unlikely that I have the time but if I will find the time after Christmas I will delete all the uh, decals and I'm going to make like a fly through with a direct comparison between with and without decals because I think it is it is so impressive to see how these subtle details change the overall appearance of your area um, I think if you would have done this uh, project uh, without the decals, it still would work and would look kind of cool, but it's actually lacking exactly what I was looking for, and that's the basic character of a forest area like that. So you have to imagine, this is something that has been built, like a, a wildlife um, reserve has been built around some buildings that potentially have been there already in a forest that existed already. So nothing about this is planned as in a planned zoo or theme park or anything. So the buildings and stuff most likely have been existing for a while. And especially in the forest, um, they have to withstand a lot of weather effects. You know, um, weathering and stuff is a, a huge thing to these buildings. There's a lot of humidity. There's a lot of uh, wet soil there's a lot of rain, there's a lot of leaves, there's a lot of stuff uh, going on in the forest in terms of, um, you know, attacking your build quality and your build materials. So these these buildings most likely um, show the signs of the time, you know, you can really tell that these buildings have been through them. And, and it's, for me personally, um, it really makes the character of a building like that. I really, I think there is barely anything more cozy than a little, you know, forest chalet or like a forest build like this um, where you have some guest apartments in and then imagine you make like a, a huge forest walk and um, the weather is kind of cold you know very humid very very wet uh, rainy cold and breezy I don't know like all these kind of things where you are you really feel that you've been in the nature and there are so so many different things that you know are so important um, to just have a warm place to to finally be in, you know. Um, here you can see, by the way, putting down all the decals that I used for the tutorial, but I thought it was a great idea to keep that in the build here as well, so you guys can see what we were using. Um, and this is the whole range of all the decals with the flexi color ability, um, and you know, all these kind of things really played out very, very well indeed. Um, but yeah, in a couple of seconds, you will see a huge cut, there you go, uh, to the final position in which it is in our Black Forest project. And I think this episode alone will show you exactly what I'm planning to do with this area. To be frankly honest, um, I made sure that none of this existed in the first episode, even though I had some blocks and stuff already put down um, to really keep this open and exciting for you. But I think with this build, you can really see the idea behind this and uh, this coming together. But just a little bit jumping back uh, to the idea of the building. Um, as you can see, I'm hiding a restaurant in here. 
Uh, that was something I was planning from the beginning, but I completely misjudged how freaking gigantic this building. It is a three by two by four meters, like a, it's like a three by two um, grid block, and then it's four meters tall. Like it's very huge, as you can see. Um, but I think I managed quite well to put it in here, and um, we will go on in the next episodes uh, de detailing it a bit more. I started very bare bones now, just to have some basic details, but um, it's going to be a very, very detailed riddle restaurant area, which I'm very very much into and um, if you are following my videos closely you know that I've been listening to Harry Potter uh, a lot during during the builds um, the audiobook and especially this coziness of these kind of buildings is something that also you will find in Hogsmeade um, for example in Harry Potter but just in general to keep it real life for me personally this is this is one big desire and this is one big thing that I consider luxury if you will um and it's something very important for my well um, you know mental well-being if you want um to have something to look forward to like this like being in holidays in the uh, in the alps for example or like in bavaria and then you know also maybe black forest and then just ending your journey in a build like this is something that i find gives you so much power and so much joy when you've been spending so much time in the nature, which let alone is already pretty great for your mental well-being. Um, so highly recommended to do a very long walk in the forest every now and then, um, you know, considering you have a forest around. Um, and then coming back to a building like this, where you can have some very much, uh, how you say that, soul food? Um, <laughs> some, some very unhealthy, or maybe not unhealthy, but like maybe not the lightest of meals. Um, that is something really luxury and something beautiful to me. This is really enjoying life to its max. And this is why I wanted to really focus so much on making this building look exactly like this and having this character, um, this coziness and everything like this. And then, and this is like, I, you know, it took me halfway through the time lapse, but this was the main inspiration um, for making then a habitat around this that is going to be the badger habitat. Now, a couple of things I need to mention to that. It's funny enough, I sent some pictures to Ivan and uh, he replied that he loved the final result very much and he said it almost looks like as if this a, uh, is a previously different uh, habitat, uh, you know, uh, repurposed for the badgers. And funny enough, exactly this is my idea. So um, the idea about this is that this building uh, previously has been more like a wildlife reserve, maybe hospitality uh, station for animals of the forest and then they have had like a lynx habitat around this um, to care for the lynx because the lynx population um, is pretty much uh, endangered a lot and uh, the idea was that this has been like a um, station in which they had some reintroduction programs and you know make sure that the lynx can survive and stuff so this habitat previously um, would have been a lynx habitat but I built this in mind with the idea that this has already repurposed into the badger area and one very important thing about this build and the same will apply also to the lynx habitat that you will see in one of the next episodes uh, my main point about this is that all of these habitats are in fact um, semi-open to the nature so these are habitats that you can close off but they always have an opening that the animals can go back into the nature in this case specifically um the badgers can well in fact in the game not but in my imagination um, they can go into the um, deer habitat quite easily because there are some little um, kind of little gates that uh, swing open once they go against this and so they could go into the deer habitat and this is the this is the main idea about this nature reserve that none of the habitats are uh, fully enclosed and the animals are not held in captivity it's really more like a nature reserve in which the animals can come here um, get some food ready and stuff and uh, even if there is like you know some health issues they can technically bring them here and close off the habitat temporarily um, to keep them there and not make them run away until they are fully cured but then they can just reintroduce them into the wild and as it as it appears this is um, quite often a thing that happens in real life and animals tend to come back very often 
uh, simply because it's easier to get to food, you know, especially in winter times, um, it's uh, a very convenient thing to get back to these things where the humans are throwing food at you, uh, other than just searching for it and hunting down some stuff. Um, so that's in fact the thing. By the way, I, I just I just heard a very interesting um, documentary about wolves in Germany because uh, the the wolf is coming back to Germany for a couple of years now. Um, it has almost been completely erased from the landscape of Germany, but now. There are over, oh my god, I think 180 packs back in Germany, uh, seven of which are here in Northern Australia. And it's kind of funny because um, this is exactly pretty much in line with what I said uh, with the other animals that come back to grab some food. Um, the, the biggest issue about the wolves is that they are starting to attack animals that are within the range of, let's say, like a, a farm or something. So the farmers are having a big interest in killing the wolves. But in fact, you are not allowed to kill wolves here because they're endangered, um, at least in Germany. And so they have to be secured. And this is like a big point of dispute. However, and that's, that's one very important thing to note. Um, the main reason for the, uh, the disaster is that the wolves become so lazy and not kill the deers and stuff that are in the forest and there are enough of them. No, they just will appear to go to, well, the as they call it, the cold buffet, you know, uh, or buffet or whatever you want to call that. Um, yeah, to grab some pre-made food, you know, that's what they do. Anyhow, it is time to wrap up the voiceover for the time lapse because yeah, I'm a little bit short on time. <laughs> the reason for that is that uh, baby is actually pretty active at the moment and uh, she's she's not having any of it to have a sleep at daytime. So there's barely any time for me to record in the daytime. And the last evenings, honestly, I've just been way too tired to record something. Um, so there is a lot of material, but I just don't have the time to record. And I want to do good recordings and not just, you know, um, some recordings in the middle of the night where I'm like super sleepy and stuff because that's not stuff you guys deserve. So let's jump over into the real-time part. There's uh, about four minutes left of the time-lapse, so enjoy it with some cozy music, and I'll be back with you in the real-time part.
All right, everyone, here we are in the real time part. As you can see, we are looking at the wrong direction. So let's turn around, and there you can see this is the badger in from the backside, actually. Something I haven't shown too often in the video because we've been focusing on this side. But I want to keep the excitement a little bit higher, so I'm effectively on this side. So you know that Tajit Cam always is a tiny bit too high, as you can see. Uh, we are a little bit too tall uh, for the people people's actual size. I wish Frontier would adjust that because it's like, like I don't know, it almost feels like we are a little bit too tall because this also makes these buildings look a little bit wrong but in fact they are completely right I will open this up a bit more so as if this is a counter to the outside but um, before we talk about this restaurant and what's gonna happen I'm going to show you around real quick here with the other stuff so we are going to go all the way around here and I'm just going to take a little shortcut here through the forest which uh, you'll not be able to do later on but um, this is where you come down here this little pathway and then Oh, it's actually more like a trail and then on the left hand side you can see some of the you know um, wonderful habitat for the deers and some of the deers are like in front of us here as you can see uh, look at that it looks beautiful the little baby deer as well getting some food um, and then now things changed uh, quite significantly because on the right hand side and you can see now that's th that this actually became a significant area that makes uh, a lot more sense now as you have the viewing to the left hand side for the deers and on the right hand side uh, it really connects beautifully with the badger area and these are also the gates i was talking about let me just quickly go around here and then just zoom in a tiny bit and you can see these are the gates that would uh, leave the badgers going into the big old uh, forest you know um, which is in fact the deer habitat but i you know i I just in our imagination this is the forest okay so the deers are living in the forest and they just come by the river down there anyway so this is why you can see the deers most often since that is their um well actually their territory you know and then this is the deer habitat nessa said uh, the abetra habitat nessa said this is inspired by a previously um, existing uh, lynx habitat and this is also why it's a bit more hilly and you can see there's a wonderful badger burrow down here uh, i try to really make that go in line a bit more with the landscape we have this uh, gazebo style building which is more likely uh, the building that has been existing here for the links you can see some broken down wall here from the tree that fell over some rocks and stuff some boulders there's another uh, piece that you know was falling over and then you can go in here and actually there's a couple more things to to witness you can see there are some of the badges right in front of our eyes wonderful as if this was planned there's even another one um, but if we go around the corner you can see you go up a little bit and so you get a better view of all these so it's very foresty but there is obviously also uh, an indoor area for them which i can't do because in fact the restaurant is behind there but um the idea is really to say that this is also obviously for them in the winter if it's cold or whatnot they can find shelter in the building if they want and there are the gates for them to be opened um and you have another burrow right over here in front of your eyes uh, that they can use um and so this is the badger habitat they do have exactly as much space as they require in the game so technically this could also be a habitat for the game uh, with all the game requirements so it's not only a nice uh, thing for the sandbox but it's actually working in real as well which uh, i like in the game look at the badgers there oh god i love that i love the view from over here i love the fact that don't 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 poof the badger in oh my god I was afraid it's gonna take the bedroom. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can see, I like this view by the way as well with the lighting and so that looks really cool here with the um, backlighting and just giving the cozy vibes away. And you have always the building here in front of you made a lot with the decals here. So it's looking down, uh, run down a bit more as I was talking about. And oh, look at that, the bedroom just running away there. Love it. Uh, it's so cool it just works very well together and this is like more or less like a little bit of an area which well you can look into but they're uh lesser uh it's lesser probable that they're over here um I, i'm gonna put some more enrichment here so that they might go up a little bit here every now and then but yeah so this is then the restaurant area and again uh it's it's not been done completely now but i will do this is going to be like the backstage access for the staff members but if you go here uh this is the entrance to the restaurant and i did in fact do some stuff and don't look yourself uh 
be confused by uh, the height here. You've seen the people are smaller, but I still have to readjust the heights of the building a little bit. It's a tiny bit too low, um, but you know, I'm just gonna jump out of Tajit Cam and I'm going to actually fly in this cam so you can see that a bit better from the actual height. So going in here, this is the height we are considering and you can see this with the staff member, it just kind of works. But in fact, these buildings sometimes are that low because people in the past have been uh, a lot smaller than we are on average so this is why and if you go in you can see there's a tiny bit of styling done already but this is just bare bone i will do a lot more there will also be like a second stage on here where we'll have some more tables actually the problem is just that the building is like so freaking high and we will in fact open up here and there will be more tables around in this area getting to use the gable of the building a bit more closing that off making this like a proper solid room so that it almost seems like you can even go in there as like a meeting room or something um, and that is going to be the story about this and we will go and open this up to this side so you have like an like a little bit of a view from the inside to the outside and, and vice versa but I just like that I like that with how the sun is just you know falling down in here just imagine getting here after a long walk and just grab a little hot chocolate you know um, by the way this is like a salt and pepper here and like a little table and it's pretty much sunken in but it's it's working pretty well I like that a lot with these tiny pieces from the Europe pack it really works together super well and um, yeah now this is the area so far and um, you've seen the teaser in snow. It also looks pretty dang great in snow. This is also why we're just going to turn on snow real quick here. So you guys can see that actually in snow. Just gonna speed up the game a little bit so we don't need to wait for so long. Um, but just to give you a little bit of an insight what is happening next. Now, um, you can see that this area here is more or less like the center of interest, so to say. And we are going to make this entire area with buildings. So we have got this area here, which will have like a beautiful outside area. We are going to make like a little well down here with like a little bit of a water play. And then up here, we will have like a little Christmas market style, like with some market stands and stuff. And at the same time, this is basically the point where we'll have the Ebex Habitat. This is going to be in this slot over here so you will have more viewing uh, points from this side and from this side as well um, which is going to be very interesting and also we're going to have the lynx habitat this is going to be featured and let me just zoom out a tiny bit and also we could stop the snow at this point and just go to cloudy i guess um and you can see on this blank space this is going to be where the lynx habitat is going to sit so oh my god see you later snow um I didn't know it's going to go, well, well, then just give me some sun again. No, no, there you go. Um, but yeah, this is this is going to be where the Lynx is going to be featured. So we will have some viewing here from the, from the uh, roundabout. And then we will have like a dedicated viewing here. And the same thing applies. All of the habitats will have uh, an opening into the forest. So we will have to enlarge the forest in this direction anyways. And we will obviously, you know, enable uh, a, a bit of a part in this side as well. And since you guys have been proposing so many cool animals we will have more than just the europe dlc animals i have some in mind that will make its appearance in here and i can already confirm that the wolf is going to make its appearance in here um not quite sure where at the moment um my tendency is to make this into the wolf habitat a very nature inspired one um and just really trying to keep it as much natural as possible and not really giving them anything uh down here because then also the tower would make a lot more sense you have then the viewing this direction but also in the other the direction so you can see a couple of things from there and this should be how a tower is uh, made out and what we will also do and this is I, something i had in mind for quite a while we will make like a lake here in the background that is visible from this tower so that's also one of the ideas i had in mind but that's about it and now it's your turn to let me know in the comments down below how you like the story of the badger in what's your best story about like you know getting into a building like that after a long walk after being in holidays or whatnot and what what kind of defines coziness for you that's something i really would love to know so make sure to comment as much as you can you know it helps the video but also uh, i'm very curious to understand what you guys have for stories and stuff so thank you so much as always have a wonderful christmas time if we don't speak until then uh, i wish you guys all the best for the christmas days stay safe everyone stay healthy and until then goodbye